Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to Part 5 of my Arduino video tutorial series. My most active subscriber asked me to make a calculator with circuits, and so I begin that process now with this video tutorial series. And specifically in this video, we will learn how transistors work. And without transistors, you couldn't watch this video because the processor in your computer contains about 3 billion of them, so I think it is a pretty important concept to understand. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate in schematics, as well as in real circuits, how they work, as well as how to create not AND and OR gates, which are going to be used to make our calculator in later tutorials. And like always, all the code, as well as all the kits I'm using to design all these circuits is available in the description underneath this video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Now an NPN transistor is made up of three types of silicone. You're going to have two layers on either side that are going to be negatively charged and a layer in the middle that is going to be positively charged. And you've seen a diagram like this in previous parts of the tutorial whenever I talked about LEDs. Now the transistor has a collector, base, and emitter, and it's very important to understand the flat side of the transistor because that's going to show you exactly where they are. And the more charge that is provided to the base, the more charge is then going to be passed from the collector to the emitter. Now while using transistors, it is very important to limit current flowing between the collector and the emitter with a resistor, and you're going to see in the circuit diagrams that I use those, and also never apply current between any of the two pins, and also never apply voltage in the reverse direction. If you do any of these things, you very likely may burn out your transistor, so just don't do them. And these are going to be the two symbols used for representing transistors. And the symbol for the NPN transistor can be remembered easily with the phrase never pointing in. And those are mainly going to be the transistors that I am going to be using in this tutorial series. Here to get you comfortable with schematic diagrams, I'm going to be using software called iCircuit. I'm not sponsored to promote them or anything. I just particularly like it and it's software that is very cheap, but I'm using it here to show you the circuit that I'm gonna create here. You can see here I have a 470 ohm resistor. Over here, this is going to represent the power coming from the Arduino and the long line is gonna be the positive terminal of the Arduino and the short line is gonna represent the negative or the ground, however you wanna to refer to it. And here we have a potentiometer or a variable resistor that we are going to feed into the base. Here is the collector of the transistor, here is the emitter, and here is an LED. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to lower the resistance on our variable resistor until it gets to a point in which we are able to flow current into the LED to demonstrate exactly how we are going to be able to use variable resistors to increase voltage to LEDs using a transistor of course and you can see that as we increase it that it is going to get more voltage and as we increase our resistance it is going to get less and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump over and i'm going to show you this in a real circuit and i'm going to use the same components with the circuit as shown before with a 470 ohm resistor to add a load to the circuit i also use the a1 analog in pin before the collector and the a0 pin after the emitter to show how the potentiometer changes affect the voltage entering the led and so you see that the voltage at the base controls the output and the voltage at the emitter will be lower than the base voltage now that you saw the real circuit, I thought it would be important to go back and cover potentiometers just like we did in previous parts of the tutorial. And remember that the potentiometer's resistance is going to change as we turn the wiper. So if this is our voltage coming in, you're going to see to get to the output that is going to travel a very short distance. And that means it's going to have less resistance. While here, if we have 5 volts coming in, we have to go the whole way around, which is a lot of resistance to finally get to our output. And now what I'm gonna do is jump over and show you the code that is going to allow us to have that previous circuit work. Okay, so here we are inside of our Arduino software. And the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is set up the pins that we are going to use to test the voltage as we increase the resistance or decrease the resistance in our variable resistor. So I'm gonna use the A1 analog in pin and I'm also going to use the A0 analog in pin. So let's just change this to after and change this to 
A0. Now inside of setup, I'm gonna have to do pretty much nothing except set up the serial monitor so we'll be able to monitor how the changes are occurring. Inside of the loop, however, I have to do a lot of things. So I'm gonna first off go before tran value and go analog read and then go and get our voltage measurement before we get into our transistor. Then I'm going to create a float. I'm gonna call this before voltage and I'm gonna go before trans value and I need to actually change this into voltage. And how I do that is go 5.0 because that is the voltage. And then the maximum number is 1023 that we will be able to read off of that pin. And then I'm going to print that information out onto the screen so that we will be able to see it before voltage. And I am also going to come in here and spell voltage correctly first. And I'm gonna put a label inside of there. I think that look a little bit nicer also. So I'm just gonna say print and we'll say before transistor. And then we are going to do pretty much the same thing after we read the voltage changes coming out of our transistor. So let's just change this to after. We're basically gonna do that everywhere. So after, and this is going to be after also. Once again, after, after. Everything else stays exactly the same. And then finally after. And then finally, I'm gonna throw another print line inside of here just so there's some separation between the output that is coming out. And then I'm also gonna throw a delay inside of this that is going to slow up the serial monitor so we'll be able to see it. And now I'm going to connect the Arduino to this guy. And I'll be able to show you, I'm gonna turn the variable resistance the whole way to the maximum. And then I'm gonna go in here and make sure I have my port set up properly. And then I'm going to compile that and then upload it to the Arduino so that we'll be able to test it out. And it's all uploaded and I can go serial monitor and you can see the changes. And then as I go and decrease my resistance, you're going to see the changes. And as you saw previously, the LED is eventually going to receive enough voltage right around there. It starts to get enough voltage and there we are lighting it up. All right, so there is the code that we need for that. And now what I'm gonna do is show you different gates. I'm gonna show you the not, the or, and the and gate. And here you can see a schematic diagram for exactly how you would make a not gate. And you can see I have a 10K resistor, another 10K, and you can see this is the power coming from the Arduino. And basically the way a not gate works is the opposite of what you do with the switch is going to be represented with the LED. So you can see right here, I do not have this switch connected. This is the transistor, of course. However, if I go and close our switch, you can see now the LED goes off. So I'm basically, it's going to provide the absolute opposite of what I would expect normally, meaning that whenever the circuit is closed, the LED is not lit. However, whenever the circuit is open, the LED is and you can see the flow of current going into the LED. Now what I'm going to do is show you that in a real circuit. And you can see the real circuit here, and I'm plugging in the Arduino to supply power as well as the ground. And as you'll, as you'll see, the switch is now open, and as I press it, the light is going to go off. And also in the description, I can also post a easier to understand circuit diagram picture, so you'll be able to make this circuit yourself. Now what we're going to do here is demonstrate how an OR gate works. Basically, to have this work properly, we are going to, again, 10K, 10K, and and this guy right here is actually a 4.7K resistor. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna change that. So let's get this out of here. There we are. All right, so we have that all demonstrated. And as I'm sure you guessed, if either of these switches is closed, that is going to provide voltage that is then going to be used by the LED. So let's close this. And you can see that the voltage is flowing and exactly how it is flowing and also that the LED is on. However, if we close this one and then come over here and close this, you're going to see that it continues to flow. And also if we close both of them, voltage is still going to flow to the LED. So now what I'm going to do is demonstrate this as a real circuit. 
and here is our OR gate and if I press either of the switches the light is going to come on and if I press both of them the light is also going to come on and like I said I'll provide in the description a link to a nice picture of this circuit so you can make it yourself. And this is an AND gate. And basically the way the AND gate is going to operate, again, 10K, 10K, 4K, or 4.7K. And the way this is going to work is both of the switches are going to be needed to be closed. So let's close this and see how that is working for us. You can see that the current is not flowing. And the reason why it's not flowing is it's coming to this transistor right here, and it's not providing a ground. And likewise, if we go and we open that up, and we come down here and close this guy, you're going to see once again that it is flowing here, not going to our LED, but instead coming down to this path and flowing out. Again, the LED is not going to be shining. However, if we come in and we close both of them, it now is going to be shining. And that is basically how we create an AND gate. And now I'll show you the circuit and how an AND gate looks in the real world. And here is our AND gate, and you can see that if I press one of the switches or the other switch that it doesn't light up. However, if I press them both, it does light up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I enjoyed making it, and like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.